So, we are going to talk about statements that are true and false. And the, the first idea they have in the book textbook, we're going to go in their order, is uh, negation. Let me just write negation. So, for example, <coughs> um, e.g., x is greater than zero. What is the statement that is the negation of x is greater than zero? Don't say anything, Abby. Or probably Travis, I need to be able to think. See how that worked? Think carefully. Um, E.g. N is even. What's the negation of N being even? You've got to read a little bit into it. I, for me to be talking about even, I must be talking about a whole number. So the negation, the opposite, if you like, is n is odd. Can you write n is even in mathematics? Eddie can. How can I write n is even using math notation instead of words? You want me to? Or? Give them a few seconds to think so it feels awkward, Eddie. Okay, tell them, Eddie. Where n equals 2a, where a is an integer. See why that works? I'll move my comma a little bit. If it's 2 times some integer, then it has to be even. And how do I say n is odd? You remember your is an element of notation from grade 10 maths? There's more of that coming. So this is the same sentence. N is even or N is 2A for some integer A. And this is the same. N is odd is the same as saying N is 2A plus 1 for some integer A. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a symbol for negation? There is. I don't even know if the book talks about it. I'm going to teach you anyway. Actually, you've seen it for set notation. The complement. The little line in complement. You can also just say not x is greater than 0. That's a bit ugly, isn't it? You can go not x greater than 0. This symbol means not. You may see that in various places. Oh, yeah, no, they do have that symbol on the bottom of page 152. <coughs> Let me show you that symbol. This symbol means not or the negation of. Be very careful with and and or. Um, oh, let me just do this way. You might naively think, maybe I should ask you, what do you think the negation of that statement is? Anybody want to have a go? X was not equal by and x was Oh, not. well done. Could we show that with inequalities? 
uh, this is different set of symbols. Oh, I meant like x is you know from negative oh. infinity to five. You could. This is neater. The key yeah. here is you cannot put or here. That's not correct. Because this statement here is true of every single possible value of x. It's always true. x is always either not 5 or not 7. Because if it is 5, it's still not 7. If you're negating an or, you have to change it to and. And if you're negating an and, guess what you do? Or. You make it as an or. Um, E.g. x is greater than 0 and x is less than... What do they use? they just less than, okay, less than 10. To negate this, you negate both parts and you change and to or. So the opposite of being greater than 0 and less than 10, it's either less than 0 or bigger than 10. Be careful with equal signs. Less or equal 0 or greater or equal 10. And because you might see the word turn up somewhere, this swapping of and to or and or to and is called... Oh dear. Am I going to get this right? Uh, this is the Morgan's Laws. I don't know if you'll see that name used anywhere except in the textbook, but you might. So you negate these for me. E.g. Negate. Um, N is divisible whoops, by 2 or N is divisible by 3. You have to be careful. If we were just speaking, we might well say n is not divisible by 2 or 3. Be careful how you write that in maths. Not divisible by 2 and not divisible by 3. Introduce you to some symbols. Really? Thank you. Called quantifiers.
going up for a little bit. Yes, it's an upside down A and an upside down E. Oh, I should have worn my math symbols tie because it's got an upside down A and an upside down E on it. And it's not because the tie is upside down. So, for example, for example, for all real numbers, x, x squared is greater than or equal to zero. That was a mess. For all x in real, x squared is greater than or equal to zero. That's how you read that. For all real numbers, their square is not negative. I have to say real numbers because complex numbers, that's not true. This statement is true, but I could easily use a quantifier to write a sentence that's not actually true. Um, So this one is true and this one is false. But I can still write the sentence. There exists an x that's a real number whose square is negative. That's not true. But I can still write the sentence. And one of the jobs that we're going to be looking, getting you guys to learn how to do is to prove, is to take a statement and say, show that this is always true. Or, alternatively, show that it's not always true. Let's try some. I want you to turn this into everyday language and tell me whether it's true or false. So let me write something. Turn it in language and then tell me whether it's true or not. Why? Right, what do you think, Eddie? True or false? True. Mm, okay. There's lots of ways you can write English words, right? There's my translation. There's lots of possible words. If you're not sure, ask me. Lots of ways you can write that. Yeah, we often resort to just now where this statement is true. Yeah, very good. Okay, true or false? Who votes true? Who votes false? Okay, why do you think it's true, Olivia? Um, I don't know, because that's just like what it does. How do I know this is true? What do you think, Eddie? Pick number. You okay. Or... Can you find me a real number x whose square is equal to its square root? Yeah. What number? One. True. True. For example, x equals one. 
To prove that a four exists is true, I just have to find a single example. To prove a four prove that there exists, you just find an example and show that it does exist. But to prove a for all is a lot harder. Much harder to prove a for all because you've got to actually show everything. However, however, let's try another one. E.g. Uh, numbers that we're doing integers. Well, not quite because two doesn't work, but that is something that does work. Two squared is four, and the square root of two is root two. Yeah. yeah so could you argue that means it's false? No. That's what he was asking. No, yeah, no. Yeah. You found one example it's not true for. But this statement says there is one that it is true for. So you have to prove it. So to prove this is true, you find an example. To prove this is false, you actually have to prove that it's impossible. Okay. Let's look at this one. Try this one. That says 5 in... It's a messy 5. 5 in is in Set it in normal language and then tell me whether it's true or false. You'll get very used to writing upside down A's and upside down E's. Feels a bit clumsy right now. Second half of that would be easy because I just wrote the maths. So one example for this is enough to disprove it. For this Correct. Right. Then it's true. Do you think it's false? Nice. Why do you think it's false, April? Uh, for example, 3 times 5. Yep, 3 times 5 15 is not even. So to disprove a for all, you just find one counterexample. To prove an exist, you find one example. To disprove a for all, you find one counterexample. Whereas proving a for all or disproving a there exists is hard work. Because to prove it for all, you've got to show that it works for every single possible end. Which Eddie and Travis have learned a technique for. Proof by induction. So for all, you do one uh, counteracts the... Correct. False. E.g. n equals 3. Doesn't so work. is it proof by example and disproof by... By counterexample, counter correct. Yeah. But to prove it for all, you have to do some more work. To disprove that there exists, you have to do some more work. And... Should we do some practice going the other way? What do you mean the other way? Uh, I mean... Write this in maths notation, then tell me whether it's true or false. Yeah. The, what does it say? The square root of any positive integer. Square any positive integer. Uh, is less than or equal to the integer.
write that using quantifier. Can I use it for all or that there exists to write that? Any positive integer. Any positive integer. I'm talking about all possible ones. Positive integers. Well, plus after your z, the square root is less or equal to the number. True or false? Who says true? Few. Who says false? A lot of people aren't sure about this one. Alright, let's try some examples. 5. Is the square root of 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes. 17. Is the square root of 17 less than or equal to 17? Less. Okay. What's the smallest number I have to go down to here? 1. Posit the, the positive integer. 2. Square root of 2 is 1.4. That's less than 2. What about 1? The square root of 1 is? Equal to, and I'm allowed to have equal to. Is there any way this can be false? Now we haven't proven it, but yes, it is true. You could easily prove this one by induction. True. But no. Prove it. I'm not going to try and prove it right now. Proving this requires a lot more work because I'm proving it for all. Uh, more practice, one more. This was a positive integer. There is at least, I mean, let me just wear this slightly in the book. There is a real number. that when squared results in a whoops smaller number This is something that often confuses Year 9 and 10 students. Sometimes Year 8 students, depending on when you start doing these things. Good, good start. Yep. There is a real number You can use whatever letter you like for your real number. I used a little r. Yeah, x is fine. Oh, real number. So I want the reals, not the images. Capital R, not capital Z. When squared, I get a number smaller than I started. Yeah, you're trying to work out what you're right. Yeah, there isn't it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're right here. Yeah. Oh. And square yeah. is less square. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. True or false? Do you think it's true? Good. Do you think it's false? Who hasn't decided yet? <laughs> okay, help us out, Ryan. Why do you think it's true? No, I still haven't decided yet. Oh, you haven't decided yet? It is, sir. You think you know Xander? Yes, that's true. Because? 0.5 squared equals Correct. Two. See, can't you just rearrange the inequality and then see that when r is less than 1? 
It's going to be. What? Well, rearrange this equality. This yeah, can't you just divide it all by r and then you get r is less than 1? Oh, very clever. You, what are the conditions when you can do that? What, that r is a real number? Oh, I mean positive and negative. Like. Okay, let's, I'm going to come back to that, right? Okay. True, for example, r equals a half. Because a half squared is a quarter. And an awful lot of students, when they first see it, they go, wait, what? I squared it and it got smaller? Yes. What Ed is saying is he, he thinks he can prove this by going, okay, r squared is less than r, divide both sides by r, But if I'm dividing by R and leaving my sign the same, certain condition has to be met. Can I do this if R is zero? Because I'm dividing by zero. Not allowed. If I divide by a negative number, what do I have to do to the sign? I have to turn that around. It's negative. But this will work as long as R is less than one and, oops, and r is greater than zero. Then I'm allowed to do that. Be careful with that. If r is negative, this isn't true. Yeah. If r is greater, less than zero, this isn't true. Okay. Negation yeah. with quantifiers. Well, maybe can you work out why they're no, called quantifiers? They tell you how many. All of them or there's one of them. No. They're called quantifiers. They tell you the quantity. So, what happens if I say, e.g., write a statement for you. For all integers n, 2n is even. What's the negation of that statement? For all integers n, 2n is even. What would be the opposite of that statement? So we swap it. Swap what? The for all, so there exists. Because? It's just the opposite. Like the and and all. It is like and and all. Can you explain why? So the year 11 are going, I don't understand this yet. Because you're disproving it if you can find that just one of them okay. is wrong. So if I can find a single counterexample, this isn't true. So the negation all good. is there is an integer n for which 2n is not even, kind of like odd instead of not even, so it's a bit clearer. Yeah. Just like the and and the or, we have to swap the quantifier as well as swapping the statement itself. This is the opposite of this. And notice, the first statement is true and the second statement is false. They're the opposite. Or um, or there is an integer n such that n is even and n is prime. Do we remember what prime means? We did mention it earlier. What's the negation of that statement? Have a go. It's going to end in as well. Change the quantifier, negate the statement.
Oh, was a bit low down. The first statement, true or false? Is there an even prime number? Yes, there is, two. This one's true, therefore this one's false. Seeing how to prove this is easy, seeing how to prove this is a little tricky. So one of the things we're gonna to learn to do is be able to swap back and forth, find something equivalent I can prove in order to work out the truth of the original statement. That's where we're going.